Hi folks, my name is John. I hope you're having a good day. This is my co-teacher, his name is Ignis. He has the majority of the qualities of a very good boy, uh, but he will not be contributing to a noteworthy degree today. Our goal today is to focus on the movement and the coordination of our pelvis and our lumbar spine. So for the duration of this class, Direct your attention to these body parts and try to maintain it. There's a lot to learn and there's a lot to gain from doing that. Now here is what the class is going to look like. First, we're going to do a couple of tight exercises. Then we're going to do a ripple exercise and then a wave exercise. And at the very end, we're going to review everything we've done today. So what are tides, ripples, and waves? Well, a tide exercise is a global extension and flexion exercise. Basically, a big opening and a big closing of the spine, an arching and a rounding. And these exercises are great for warming up, for conditioning of the spine, and they also help us improve our ability to arch and round the spine under specific circumstances. A ripple exercise is a more isolated exercise and encourages a fair bit of coordination. And these kind of exercises are meant to help us unlock new movements in the spine. And then we have the waves, which are a great way of mobilizing the spine. And they also help us learn how to move more fluidly with the resources, the ranges of motion that are currently available to us. Now, before we do any exercises together, I'll just be doing a quick and hopefully competent demonstration of the relevant exercise, simply so you can get a general impression of what we're about to do. Speaking of which, I'm now going to demonstrate our first exercise, and that is a standing exercise tide. In a standing tide, I am going to place my feet approximately shoulder width apart. I personally like pointing my feet slightly outwards, so I point my right foot towards 1 o'clock and my left foot towards 11 o'clock. I then take both my arms, place them in front of me, and then I open up and I open up my chest and as I do that, I arch my spine. And I look very seductive. Now, the sensations that I'm looking for in this position is a nice stretch of the abs, a stretch of the pectoral muscles, and a contraction of the muscles in the lo lower back and the muscles between the shoulder blades. Now, after I've done this, I've opened up, I'm going to bring my arms forward, and as I do that, I bend my knees, I tuck my tailbone underneath me, and I round my spine as I reach my arms forward. And here, in this also incredibly seductive posture, I am experiencing the opposite of sensations. I am noticing a contraction of the abs and a nice stretch along the spine and between the shoulder blades. And I open again, expanding the chest and the ribs, arching the spine, opening the arms, and I close, and so on, and so forth. But, dear friends, I will not suffer the cruel fate of having to do that by myself. You're now going to join me. So, get into a standing position. Again, feet approximately shoulder width apart. Pointing your feet outward, if that feels comfortable. Bring your arms forward, and now open the arms as you expand the chest, the ribs, and you arch. And just stay in this position for a bit. Get to know it. And see if you can identify that feeling of stretch at the front and contraction at the back. And now, slowly inhale. And exhale, bring the arms forward. Bend the knees, 
tuck your tailbone underneath you and round your spine as you reach forward. And just stay here for a bit. Noticing the stretch at the back, a slight contraction at the front. And now inhale, open up. And exhale, close. Inhale, arching, expanding. Exhale, closing, rounding, tailbone underneath you. And inhale, open, take up a lot of space. Exhale, close, as if you just got the most comfortable gut punch of your life. And inhale, open. And exhale, close. Two more. Inhale, open. And exhale, close. Last one. Inhale, open. And exhale, close. And stand back up. Now I am unfortunately cursed with not getting to see what you're currently doing, but I'm going to assume the best and say, job well done. Now, let's move on to our second tide exercise. This exercise is slightly more relevant to today's goal because it allows us to focus more on pelvic movement in a tide. Now, here's what this exercise, the bent over tide, looks like. Feet shoulder width apart, I bend at the hip, I bend my knees, and I place my hands on top of my knees, and I lock out my elbows. That way, I get to rest the weight of my torso on top of my knees. Now, I'm going to do my very best impersonation of a person who has back issues, but is also trying to romance you by way of twerking. So from here, I arch and bring my chest up and forward. And in this position, I can notice a slight stretch in my hamstrings and glutes. And now I exhale and I tuck my tailbone underneath me and I pull my upper back up towards the ceiling. It should almost feel like somebody's trying to hang you from the ceiling from your perhaps existent bra strap. And reverse, open, arching, chest forward and closing, tailbone underneath, bra strap up towards the ceiling. Now let's try to do that together. Feet shoulder width apart, hinge at the hips, bend the knees, place your hands on top of your knees, lock out your elbows. And now as you breathe in, arch, bring the chest forward and up, and exhale, round, tucking your tailbone underneath you, and your back up towards the ceiling. And inhale, arching, maintaining connection with the pelvis, noticing what's happening, and exhale, closing, pulling your back up. And inhale, arch, Explore your end range of motion here. And exhale, close. Rounding your spine as much as you can. Again, inhale, open. And exhale, close.
inhale open arching as much as you feel is possible in this position exhale close try to pull your belly button in towards your spine and relax and get back to neutral okay so now that our spines are prepped and ready to go it's time for us to do today's ripple exercise the pelvic seesaw but before we do that we first need to establish two basic positions of the pelvis which are a posterior pelvic tilt and an anterior pelvic tilt now in a posterior pelvic tilt we're actively trying to diminish the distance between our waistband and our belly button and we do so by contracting the muscles in our glutes like so to go into an anterior pelvic tilt we need to do the opposite we need to increase the distance between our waistband and our belly button by contracting the muscles in our lower back now if you are unfamiliar with these two positions i recommend that you hit pause and you practice for a bit while you listen to Shakira or something else um, but if you are familiar with these let's continue by practicing the pelvic seesaw and the pelvic seesaw looks like this here's a quick demo I first go into posterior pelvic tilt I then push my hips forward I then go into anterior pelvic tilt and I then push my hips back posterior forward anterior back now while I'm doing this I'm imagining an invisible barrier in front and behind my torso and I'm doing my very best to prevent my torso from breaking through this barrier now let's try to do that together so first go into posterior pelvic tilt bring your hips forward go into anterior pelvic tilt bring your hips back posterior pelvic tilt hips forward anterior pelvic tilt hips back posterior forward anterior back keep in mind that invisible barrier posterior tilt forward anterior back and now we're just going to practice this movement at our own speed and if the movement feels impossible consider reducing the range of motion and let's just make a verbal agreement that we do our very best to not engage in prolonged eye contact as we practice this if you've now tried doing it with a smaller range of motion and it feels more manageable try making it slightly bigger try not to rush the movement you have all the time in the world and you usually get to where you want to go faster by moving a bit slower and relax 
good going on not looking at each other awkwardly. Well, you got to look at me, but you know, that's, that's the life of an influencer. Now we are ready to work on our wave exercise for this class. And that is the pelvic wave. And the very cool thing is that the pelvic wave is basically the pelvic seesaw without pausing. So our goal now is to transition from the various positions we just moved through, but doing it with such an even speed that the positions are no longer visible. Now here's what it looks like. Again, invisible barrier in front, invisible barrier behind you. Post your pelvic tilt, hips forward, anterior pelvic tilt, hips back. Posterior forward, anterior back. Okay, now let's try to do that together. Establish your barriers, your torso is not going anywhere. Move into posterior pelvic tilt and with an even speed, push your hips forward and then move into anterior pelvic tilt, push your hips back. Posterior pelvic tilt, hips forward, anterior pelvic tilt, hips back. And continue moving at a steady speed and give yourself the opportunity to start small. If fluidity is the goal, then size or volume is not a requirement. In fact, many times it just tends to get in the way. Posterior tilt, pelvic tilt, hips forward. Anterior pelvic tilt, hips back. And you can imagine that somebody is tracking the speed of your pelvis. And just like Keanu Reeves in the blockbuster movie Speed, we want to make sure that the speed doesn't decrease at any point. There's an even speed. No position is given more attention than any other right now. Now let's just try to make this pelvic wave 20% bigger, just a bit bigger. And let's increase the volume again. Just try to cover a bit more ground. and even bigger. And now we're slowly going to ramp up to what we believe to be our maximum range of motion in this wave without moving the torso forwards or backwards. And remember, bigger doesn't mean faster. Take your time. That also allows you a bigger chance of being aware of what's happening at any point in the movement. And let's see if we can get to our end range of motion now. Try to make the wave as big as possible. And now let's try to make it a bit smaller. Dial down the volume. And lower still. And smaller. 
and smaller. Now we want to try to get to the point where the movement is barely visible. The smallest pelvic wave in the world. And even smaller. And relax. We did it. Job well done. So, before you go, let's review everything we did this class. Exercise number one was a standing tide. Feet shoulder width apart, pointing slightly outward. Arms in front of you, arms out to the side as you open an arch. Arms forward as you tuck your tailbone and you close. Exercise number two, bent over tide. Knees bent, hips bent, hands on your knees, elbows locked. Seducing, twerking, making an impact on the world and your future spouse. Exercise number three was the pelvic seesaw, which consisted of posterior pelvic tilt, anterior pelvic tilt, hips forward, hips back. So it was posterior pelvic tilt, hips forward, anterior pelvic tilt, hips back, cat, posterior pelvic tilt, hips forward, anterior pelvic tilt, hips back. And the pelvic wave was the exact same motion, simply without stopping, without making any part of the movement more remarkable than the other. Posterior pelvic tilt, hips forward, anterior pelvic tilt, hips back. And that was our class. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.